The Matrix, an iconic trans allegory, created an effect that has survived decades. And so today we are going to look at how to make a Matrix effect in Photoshop, pumping it up with a bit more depth and a bit more of that sweet, sweet neon glow. All resources featured today can be found on Envato Elements. Get unlimited downloads of design assets, templates, and fonts with Envato Elements. Millions of creative digital assets with simple commercial licensing. And you can cancel anytime. Subscribe now with the link down in the description. First things first, we are going to create a green color fill layer and paint some black onto the upper and lower half, creating an almost vignette effect. Next, we are going to add the matrix code using these matrix backgrounds and overlays. There are several to choose from, including both numbers and characters. Today, let's use the matrix 11 texture, dragging and dropping it onto our canvas, enlarging the texture significantly. Don't worry about pixelation or blurriness, we will fix it here coming up. Before that, however, let's bring down the opacity to around 50% and right click convert to smart object. So we want these numbers to appear out of focus as they will be in the background of the image. We don't need them to be sharp. We need them to be blurry in fact. So let's go to filter, blur, field blur and set the blur to 34 pixels, then hit OK. Duplicate the Matrix 11 texture and set it to Lighten at 65% opacity. Let's move the texture around a bit, shrinking it slightly as well. Since we made the texture a smart object, we can double click the Blur Gallery setting and adjust it. Let's change the settings to Blur 26 pixels and a Light Bokeh of 38%. Then we can slide the light range left toggle to the left, placing it underneath the word range, uh, about. Once happy with the effect, hit OK. Let's repeat that step one more time, duplicating the Matrix 11 texture again, but setting it to screen at 65% opacity, shrinking it down to where it's roughly the height of our canvas, making it smaller than the other previous textures. Next, let's double click the Blur Gallery settings again, bringing the blur down to just 14 pixels and removing the light bokeh. Let's also add an Image Adjustments Brightness Contrast, setting the brightness to 75%. Group the layers, naming that group Background. Next up, let's drag and drop our subject onto the canvas. Select the Object Select tool and click the Select Subject button up in the upper Options toolbar. With the selection, you can then add a layer mask to the subject. If the Subject Select tool uh, does miss any areas, then you will want to go in and select and mask them in yourself. Once relatively happy with the mask, uh, double click the layer mask, set the feather to 0.9 pixels, and then hit Select and Mask. Check the Smart Radius option, set the radius to around 3 pixels. Uh, now we can use the Refine Edge Brush along the edges of the subject. If you have selected too much, press Alt to deselect. Go ahead and press OK once the mask is at least slightly better. Because we can finish up refining our mask using the smudge tool. Uh, set to around 25 to 30% strength to push the remaining white edges inward. Also use this brush to blur any edges that need to be blurred, like the hood and the shoulders of the jacket, as they are um, slightly out of focus.
Finally, use a large soft round brush to mask out the lower portion of the subject, removing the edge of the image. Now let's create a tech-inspired dark green color grade. First, a color lookup adjustment layer set to foggy night with an opacity of 26%. Second, a black to white gradient map set to 42% opacity. Third, a green solid color fill layer set to multiply and a 38% opacity. Fourth, a another color lookup adjustment layer set to tension green at 59% opacity. Fifth, one last color lookup layer set to film stock at 84% opacity. And finally, a selective color adjustment layer affecting just the neutrals with the settings being plus 7, minus 10, plus 3, and 0. And then you're going to go ahead and mask out the face of the subject on that selective colors mask, and then group everything together. Let's create and clip a curves adjustment layer into our subject. We are going to increase the highlights and then double click the layer to open the layer style panel. Here we can adjust the blend if settings. Hold alt to split the leftmost toggles up moving the right half almost completely to the right, and then the left half right under the uh, 225 here. Now let's create and clip a second curves layer into the subject, placing it above the first. This time we are going to bring down the highlights to create some dark shadows. Hit Ctrl I to invert the layer mask, and mask in the shadows underneath the chin and onto the jacket. Keep the highlights on the neck and jawline for the most part. Next, we are going to create and clip one final curves layer, changing it from the RGB channel to green, and then once again, bring up those highlights about halfway. Invert the layer masks, and then mask in some green highlights onto the hair, cheeks, jawline, and edges of the neck. Let's finish up the lighting by creating and clipping a new layer set to screen into the subject, placing it above all other clipped layers. Lower the opacity to around 50% and then paint in some green along the edges of the face, filling in any shadows with a nice lime green color. A small semi-soft round brush should do perfectly. Now we are going to add some glow and rim lighting to our subject. Let's create two new layers, set the screen, placing them both below the subject. With a large fluffy round brush with a flow of around 10% and set to a vivid green as well, paint in some glow behind your subject. Lower the opacity of the layers if the glow is too strong. Using two layers instead of just one will help you build the light up slower, as well as give you more control over the opacity. Now for the rim light, just duplicate the subject, bringing it below the original. We are going to add a color overlay layer effect, filling it with that same neon green. Now nudge the layer 5 to 10 pixels upward, so that the green is just barely peeking uh, from behind the subject. Let's right click, apply layer mask, and then add a new layer mask. Mask out all of the lower jacket, most of the shoulders, and a small amount of the hood. Group all of these layers and all of the other previous subject layers into a group named subject. We are getting close to the end, so let's drag and drop a new Matrix 11 texture onto the canvas, shrinking it down significantly and setting it to screen. Make sure the texture is placed over the iris of the subject as we want it to appear as if the numbers are reflecting in his eyes. Zoom in on one of the eyes and then using the elliptical marquee tool create a selection the size of the subject's iris. Once happy with the selection, add a layer mask. To make the numbers appear brighter and more prominent, 
we can duplicate the texture. Go ahead and repeat the same steps with the second eye as well. Finally, copy one of the previous Matrix 11 textures from our background, uh, bringing that layer above all current layers except for the color grade. Make it very large and set the blur gallery blur to at least 35 pixels and the light bokeh to at least 35%. Adjust the light range to increase the light bokeh as well if needed. These settings will depend on the size of your texture as well as your personal taste. Let's add a layer mask to the texture and mask out any numbers that are falling directly onto the face. Now, if you want to take this matrix effect even further, the anaglyph action will give you the perfect glitchy cherry on top of the matrix cake. Group all of your layers together, duplicate the group, merge the group, then name the merged layer background. That is very important or else the action will not work. And then hit play. Watch it go. The red worked really nicely with the green, so I do highly recommend it. And that is all there is to creating a matrix effect in Photoshop. I, for one, welcome our new robot overlords. If that wasn't enough and you're looking to learn even more Photoshop tips, tricks, and effects, why not check out some of the other excellent videos that Envato Touch Plus has to offer. If you like this video and would like to see more, consider giving us a like and even subscribing if you haven't already. And don't forget to click the little bell icon to be notified of all new videos. Happy designing. See you next time.